Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! In the last episode, we entered Mr. Windybank's pawn shop and we talked to him about the pawn shop, we had a look around, he told us what kinds of measures of security he has in stock and also uh, what the violin thing is all about. And at some point, Gina for some reason showed up and she wanted to sell him or pawn him uh, a metal disc and they got into an argument about that, but we'll know about more about this when we talk to her about the pawnbroker's customer. Somehow, I didn't really think you were the sort of person who'd use a pawnbroker, Ms. Lestrade. Yeah, well I am, alright. I'm a Londoner, just like everyone else. That a problem, is it? N -n not at all, it's just that, well... Oh, I get it. I know you what you're thinking. That thing probably don't even belong to her. Probably got it on the dip dive, didn't you? Yeah, I can see it written all over you, Chevy, Chevy Chase. Well, I, I might have been thinking something along those lines. You're not going to deny it, Mr. Naruhodo. All right, uh, all right then. I'm just going to come out and ask you straight. Do you pawn things that you steal from other people? Well, um, I don't know how best to answer that really, um... Spouse, sometimes. You're not going to deny it either, Mrs. Lestrade. But not this time, alright? I swear, the thing belongs to me. The disc that Mr. Windybank is holding. Perhaps we should see what he has to say about all this. So, I guess we talk to him then. Miss Lestrade's disc. Mr. Windybank, what exactly is this metal disc that Miss Lestrade has brought in? It seems to have hundreds of tiny little bumps on its surface. Oh, this is a music disc, you see, for use inside a music box. In a music box? What? You don't even know what a music box is? <laughs> you Eastern Lot 8072, too, eh? I know what a music box is. I've just never seen one of these discs before. The small protrusion on the metal disc can code the tune to be played by the music box. You simply insert the disc and set the machine going, and beautiful music plays. It's so incredible! Tell us what tune is on the disc. Well... I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. There are so many different types of music box. You see, British made, German, Swiss. I have no way of knowing which particular machine this disc was made for. Ah, I see. And that's it in a nutshell. I wouldn't have any customers for an item like this, even if the young lady forfeited it. Really, I'm already offering more than I should at a penny. That's a pack of lies! It told me it did! It said it was, well... He? Who? Never you mind! It just ain't right, it's all! That disc worth good money! I know it is! Well then, you'll have to try your luck at another pawnbroker's, won't you? Oh! Hmm, so let's talk about Gina then. She's been in before, of course, this little Tatame Demalion. I see. And brought some dubious article or other with her every single time, I might add. Dubious? What are you trying to say? I'm an honest customer, me! So, is there something dubious about the disc she brought in today? Well, if only it were that simple. Sorry, what do you mean? What she actually brought in was a storage ticket. Ah, uh, a storage ticket? So... Mr. Strahd has actually come to redeem an article from you today, is that right? Yeah, that's right. A girl like me has a lot of stuff what needs story. Alright, yes, that's definitely dubious. The article in question would have been forfeited at midnight tonight. But as she gave me the ticket for it, and repaid both the loan and the interest, I was obliged to return the article to her. But 
what was the article? Do tell us, Mr. Windybank. The little scamp is wearing it, ma'am. It's the overcoat that she redeemed. Oh. What? What's wrong with that? It fits, don't it? I mean, it's mine, so of course it does! So, what about the disc, then? How does that come into all this? Ah, the disc is something else. A new article to pawn if the girl and I can agree a price. A new article to pawn. I'm confused. I thought you said that Miss Lestrade brought in a storage ticket today. It's really quite simple. Yes, the child brought me a storage ticket and the money owed on it, as you say. For this heavy black coat which she returned to her care, as I'd understood it? That's right, yes. And rather unsurprisingly, as soon as the little rug muffin put the thing on, she went rifling through the pockets. Oh, you mean... What? Don't you know it's rude to stare at a lady? Ah, I see. So it came from the pocket of the overcoat, did it? If you mean this disc, then yes, exactly, ma'am. And she immediately tried to pawn it? For quite a high price. For quite a high price as well. This is all rather suspicious, I think. Give it up! I'm just trying to pawn something like anyone else would. Miss Lestrade, may I ask who deposited that overcoat here in the first place? Um, well, me. It doesn't really appear to be your size. Me old man! It's me old man's, ain't it? Is it Miss Lestrade? Yes, this is definitely all rather suspicious. Out of my way, please. Out of my way, please. Who's this picture postcard English gentleman? Good day to you, ladies. Gentlemen. What's your problem, huh? There is no problem, as long as you remove yourself. I have a matter to discuss with the proprietor. And if you intend to make a problem of it, I shall see you outside, little girl, for the hiding you deserve. Look, ain't it obvious? I ain't done talking with them yet. If you think you're such a gent, you should know how to wait and learn. Well, you are an impudent little brat, aren't you? As well as a pickpocket. Uh, who, who are you? How do you know who I am? The question is, how do you not know who I am? You haven't, you haven't the courtesy even to remember the faces of your victims, it seems. What? You, you mean I, from you? Broker? Um, yes, sir. I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Yes, yes, um... The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Oh, my! Now that's a lie! What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you vastal. And needless to say. Any music biz any music boss <laughs> sorry. Any music box discs too. No, you you can't have it. You just can't. It's me old man's, or it was. No, it's mine. Goodness, Mr. Naruto. This is a very awkward situation. Yes. I think perhaps we should hear both sides of the story in a little more detail. So I guess... We could talk to that gentleman. 
who is not a real gentleman because he's very rude, although speaking very politely, but he is a rude asshole. Sorry, I don't like him. So, let's talk to Gina first, the gentleman's accusation. Miss Lestrade, is what the gentleman is saying? What you think? It's all lies, ain't it, obviously? I swear in my life, I ain't never laid eyes on that dandy before. Let's hear it now, you little rag muffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you brought in here just now. No, I swear, I swear to God. It was barely an hour ago. I was walking along the street, minding my own business. When this little guttling ran into me, I knew at once what had happened. I've been robbed again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Yet again? Oh yes, as you can see, I am a man of impeccable style. This isn't the first time that I've been targeted by these back slum scoundrels. Now then, relinquish my overcoat. Nah. Come along now, Miss Lestrade. Give the good gentleman his coat back. If you're going to cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. Hold on! Why does everyone think it's me? Just look at the stand, Cove! And you think I'm the dodgy one? I'm sorry, but no one's going to believe you. Well, what about evidence? Yeah? Where's your evidence that I've stolen something, huh? Come on, let's see it! Oh, I have evidence, naturally. You what? Okay, let's talk about the evidence then. Evidence that the article Mr. Lestrade redeemed actually belongs to this gentleman? Of course, we need only consult Mr. Windybank's ledger to know the truth. We'll be able to look up the name of the person who deposited the article in the first place. Yes, brilliant! I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. Oh! I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy of mine. But why not? Well, now, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider. A great many of them prefer to maintain their anonymity. Yes, I see. But then how can you know if an article belongs to the person asking to redeem it? Oh, it's quite simple. Good sir, might I trouble you for the watchword associated with the article in question? Of course, it's... Professor. Yes, that's right, and all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article, without doubt. A watchword? Interesting. Watch words. So, about these watch words, Mr. Windybag. As I just explained, I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me. There are many reasons why. Certain customers would like to keep their activities secret. That wasn't exactly a subtle glance at Mr. Sean's now, was it? Great detectives have no dark secrets, none at all. Yes, well, anyway, that's why I always ask for a watchword whenever I accept a new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination of numbers used to unlock a vault. The date of deposit, a description, and a watchword uniquely, uniquely identify each item. And of course, then I give the storage ticket to the customer. When someone comes to redeem this something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. And if that someone tells you the correct watchword, you return the article? That's right, sir. Yes. Just as soon as the requisite fee is paid. And I have supplied you with the information you require already. But for the avoidance of doubt, the article in question 
is an overcoat. Deposited two months ago on 15th February. With a watchword of Professor. All perfectly correct information, sir. But, but, ah! Oh! Really, this is beyond a joke now. There is no further room for doubt. supposed to talk to the gentleman quote unquote gentleman picture postcard gentleman excuse me but who are you one would expect the inquirer to introduce himself first though clearly you are not British so perhaps our ways are foreign to you Oh, so sorry, yes, we're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh, yes, Japan. I've heard talk of the place. Its inhabitants live in some fiery brown-colored soup, dressed up with exotic spices. You might be thinking of somewhere else. There was that theatrical gesticulation about... Perhaps, anyway, if you are a gentleman, sir, you offer your own name first before inquiring after the name of another. Uh, of course, yes, I'm Yunosuke Naruhodo. I'm a lawyer, well, a student of law, really. My name is Susato Mikotoba. I am Mr. Naruhodo's assistant. I see. My name is Benedict. Yes, Agat Benedict. Enchanté. He's so refined in how he holds himself and how he speaks, but that name is suspicious. Now to the matter at hand. My overcoat. Return it at once to someone with the style to carry it off. Every move it makes, every breath it takes, I can't stand watching it. So, let that be an end to the matter. And thank you for your custom, Mr. Agat Benedict, sir. With such reasonable rates of interest, I may even decide to come back. Tch, this is what I ate grown-ups. Just cause I'm a diver, everyone thinks that makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat pockets, if you please, broker. But of course, sir, here is the disc for you. Just this one? Pardon, sir. I was expecting another. Uh, that is, I deposited another. Another disc? Oh, uh, um, oh dear. I regret to inform you, sir, that was what... That what was deposited with me was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be in one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. So, Gottling, you're hiding more of what's rightfully mine, are you? Says who, uh, I don't know nothing about it. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Wait a minute, that disc is mine. Ah, oh, what, what do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've, you've drawn blood, you filthy animal! Oh my, yes! There's blood on the disc! It's because of all those sharp little bumps. The man must have scratched his finger on them. I found it first, alright? I, I mean, it belonged to me, old man! So you're not having it? 
Oh, you, you take it. Me? If I hang on to it, they'll have it off me again. So you keep it hold of it. Miss Lestrade, I... Why is this so important to her? The music disc box has been added on the court record. Music disc box. A metal disc used to play music in a me mechanical music box. The piece of music which remains unidentified is stored on the disc by means of small protrusions. You there, in the Black Library. Have the disc to me at once, please. No, don't. He's lying. Grown-ups are all liars. Uh, what do I do now? How am I going to resolve this? Oh, okay, so we have to decide what to do. We'll have to examine. Okay, let's talk to Mr. Windybank first. Mr. Windybank is clearly at loss here. We have to do something about this before he reaches for that revolver face. Okay, so he's not going to be of help. We're going to... Look at Mr. Windybank, watching diligently over his shop. There are still so many things I'm curious about, but somehow I don't really feel like this is the right time to be browsing. Calming this fraud situation must be our first priority. And I'm fairly certain that we can find just the great thing we need among the articles here in the shop. Yes, but it's this, it's the music thing. There's no way... Although... Mr. Sholmes is there as well. Okay, let's talk to the... Yeah, I don't want to say it again. I already cursed in this episode. I'm not going to do it again. Look at those piercing eyes. He's clearly in no mood to talk. We have to do something quickly before this mysterious gentleman leaves to fetch the police or something. Yeah, Mr. Benedict. Wow, Mr. Lestrade is really looking daggers at that mysterious gentleman. We need to do something to calm things down before she loses control and attacks him again. Well, well, well. So, I guess the only thing we can do is talk to Herlock. Um, Mr. Shones, what are you examining with such keen interest there? As you enjoy a bar of caramel, I see. So, you found me at last, Mr. Naruhodo. Sorry? After that young pickpocket sent me on my way, I was forced to lurk in the shadows. Cruelly ostracized, as the rest of you partook in the jovial atmosphere of fellowship. I had nothing to occupy my mind, but was too ashamed to let society see what my downfall had done to me. So, feigning mock interest, I pretended to examine the tedious trinkets in this desolate place. Whilst, as you shrewdly observed, gnawing on the only friend I have left, a 7% solution of caramel. Pray, do you claim to understand the depths of my despair, Mr. Narodo? But how could you? I was so lonely, so desperately lonely. Then why on earth didn't you rejoin the conversation? Things have gone from bad to worse here, you know. Yes, I overheard much of your conversation. Or rather, in my craving for human contact, my ears devoured every word that was uttered. You really were sad, weren't you? Poor Mr. Charles, I feel simply awful for you. It would seem that my inference, uh, my inferences are correct. Oh, surely you're not about to tell us that you've solved the entire case once again. My dear madam, sometimes I wonder where my genius for deduction to be com commoditized how much could I pawn it for? <laughs> How much? Oh, my. oh man! Okay, uh, it seems Mr. Sholmes has had another of his flashes of inspiration. But who knows if it will help to resolve the situation between Miss Lestrade and the mysterious gentleman. What's the right thing to do here? Alright, guys, we haven't yet reached the half hour mark, but we are very close. And we know that the dance of deduction will take a long time. So, I'm going to end the episode here. If you want to know what the dance of deduction this time is going to unfold for us, tune in for the next episode of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. See you then.